to your presence today, for you have a word for us today, Lord. Let us open our hearts and our ears and our minds unto you, Jesus, to hear exactly what you have for us today. Oh, we can't wait to see you. Amen. Oh, I want to see you.
just the name of Jesus, just the name of Jesus. We're singing that. I can't help but go back to the times in my life when I've had to just speak the name of Jesus and to see the results in that, friends. Speak in the name of Jesus when nothing else but speak in His name. I challenge us this week over every situation, no matter how tough it seems, no matter how hard, no matter what it may be, just keep speaking the name of Jesus. Well, what do I do if things don't change? You just keep speaking the name of Jesus. You just keep speaking the name of Jesus and you will watch things happen. Kenra, you feel like sharing a little bit, do you? But that's what she just kept doing. In the midst of it all, we just kept speaking the name of Jesus until it broke. And it did seem like it was going to happen so many times. But then it did. Then it did. How many times have we prayed and spoke over things and situations and it didn't happen right then? But we do not give up. We are not crushed. Okay? We, we do not give up in despair. But instead, we continue forward knowing that He makes a way. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family as we go all day. Jesus. Or is it just me? It's Hallelujah. I can't wait to get here on Sunday mornings and see what God's going to do. But I'm even more excited to see what God's going to do. But we're going to have to usher in the Holy Spirit. We're going to have to usher in the Holy Spirit. We're going to have to come here with hands raised. We're going to have to come here thanking Jesus for what He's done and what He's going to continue to do in this church in the name of Jesus. I feel like there's a fresh anointing that's going to fall in this church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's a fresh anointing that's going to fall in this church. Seven years ago, and they 
the challenge was to listen to listen to the radio station or any radio station for that matter for 30 days and watch how God would move in my life. And I did that. And seven years later, I've never I've never changed my radio station. It's been on that station for the last seven years. And if you ask my kids, Mom, what radio station I listen to, they'll tell you I do not. And if, he, if my husband gets in there and tries to turn my radio station, I say, no, 88.1, that's what we're keeping it on. I need to be constantly fed, fed um, you know, the word through, through song. Um, not only did God provide me with a, um, you know, with a vehicle, with a radio that I could listen to, to my music, but um, I also started over with, with a job, you know, having to get a job. And uh, I told God, I started praying for a better job and, you know, committed to God that I would pay my tithes. And he gave me a better job. And then I continued to pay my tithes and he gave me an even better job. See, the idea that I had in my head was so much smaller than what God had planned for our lives. And if I told you where we were compared to where we are now, I mean, some of you, some of you saw where we, where we were and, and now where we are, and you see where we are now. Um, and people are actually are actually proud of us, you know. And that's just God. God moved. He did so much. He did such a, a mighty work in, in our lives. And when Pastor says, I know we, we read as a as a church. I, I think we still do this, but it says it talks about paying your tithes and says about. Uh, it being pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That is the truth. That is truth. If you pay your, you pay your tithes, and I'm not just talking about financially, we be blessed. I'm talking about your relationship with God, and every area of your life is going to be blessed. This, this isn't even about, you know, materialistic or financial. It's not even about that. But not only did God provide, you know, get my family back together, and make my husband a, a godly man and make him the head of our household. But I also started praying. I had a fear of being, you know, speaking in front of people. And I know I have, I have a calling of singing. I've had that calling since I was four years old. I've been on, I've been on the church stage sing, singing since I was four years old. And I got out of that for many, many years of singing. And so when God said it, time for you to go back on stage. I, don't, I didn't think I could do it. I mean, I remember getting back up on that stage after so many years, and I was so nervous that I almost had to run off the stage and run to the bathroom. I mean, my stomach was so... I was having a literal panic attack. I said, okay, Lord, I know that you want me to do this, but I don't know if I can physically do it. I'm terrified of singing in front of people. And I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, I had to pray for that for years, and uh, God delivered me from that. I, I no longer have, you know, stage where I sing in front of people. And then I also started praying for boldness to be able to talk to y'all like I'm talking to y'all right now. Because I, because I also struggled with that. And um, so here I am praying, speaking with boldness, and this is something that I... It, it may not mean anything to y'all, but it means everything to me because at one point in time, I, I could not see myself doing this. I prayed for boldness, and, and, and God gave me that, that boldness, and I'm still working on that. Um, but I do want, I want to read a little bit out of uh, Matthew 7 and 7. I spoke about the things that I prayed for, and then I look back and, and get God has given me all of those things. And the Bible says in Matthew 7, 7, through 8, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If that is not the truth, y'all, as long as it's in, in line with God's will, those words are true. I had a friend tell me the other day, and it's probably the best compliment that I could have ever, ever received. But she told me that, and it's one of my, it's one of my employees, and she said that I, when she thought about me, she thought about me, that I was a woman after God's own heart. And I'm not saying that to brag, because if she knew the demons that I dealt with, 
and deal with on a daily basis. She would not be saying that if she knew what I struggle with on a daily basis. But what a compliment for somebody, you know. And isn't that what we want to be, men and women after God's own heart? Isn't that what we want, what we want people around us to see when they look at us? Who cares about the success, you know? Don't we want people to see that we are men and women after God's own heart? Because when we, when people see that in us, guess what they want to do? They want to emulate that. They want to be that same way. Sister Jean said something many, many years ago. And uh, you'll probably remember when I, when I tell you, but this is probably been 10. She was still teaching Sunday school. But she said something. She said, this year I want to be so close to God that I can hear His heartbeat. Do y'all remember Sister Jean said saying that? <laughs> Do y'all remember? And I would I won't ever forget that. So that's how close I want to be to God. And, sh and shouldn't that be our goal? Everybody's goal to be so close to God that we can hear His heartbeat. God is a way maker. And you can look at my life and you can tell that that is it. That is truth. God's a way maker. He can make a way out of any situation. No matter what it looks like, God can make a way.
Brothers House this morning. So glad you're here. And believing God for great and mighty things. And the, there is nothing better than the Lord. Yes. In Psalm 34, verse 8, New King James Version. I'm not going to use what I gave you earlier, Brenda Stewart. With my apologies. But in Psalm 34, verse 8, New King James Version, the psalmist is thinking about this very thing. How good God is. That, that God is just good. And that, yes. that when you when you try the Lord, when you walk with the yes. Lord, when you dedicate your life to God, and when you commit your life to God, you're going to find out if you really commit your life to God. Not half-heartedly, and that's how a lot of us sometimes might prefer to do. But when you sell out to the Lord, or as in the words yes. of the late Carmen, a contemporary English singer who wrote some good songs, he said in one of his songs, it was, he was sold out the whole route. And, and, and when you sell out the whole route, I'll tell you, God will do great things. And yes. in Psalm 34, verse 8, that's, some of us already know the verse, so taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. That's the first part. part. The second part says this, happy are those who take refuge in Him. And when we take our refuge in the Lord, uh, things are going to come our way. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not good. Um, two Thursdays, one th two Thursdays ago, Brenda had hip replacement surgery. It's gone very well. Uh, somebody called yesterday and said, uh, "How's she doing?" I said, well, "Well, she's had that about three weeks now. It may be when you're living, when you're having to be. I'm not really a good caretaker. I thought I was going to be better than that. But at the same time." Uh, you know, when you think about God's goodness and grace, people have been very kind to us. We appreciate that. A lot of prayers. We appreciate that. And she's had really a, 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 a just an amazing uh, recovery, basically pain-free. Not much pain at all, except when she first came out of the surgery. And you can, and we, and, and it's just amazing to see that. And I thank God for the people who pray. If you're a praying person. You're going in the right direction. I think that's part of the reason Jesus said in Luke 18, 1, that people are always to pray and not to faint. Now, my favorite version of that says we ought to pray and not lose heart. People lose heart sometimes. That's the cure, uh, according to Jesus, for not losing heart, not giving up. And the psalmist said, just taste of the Lord and see if he is not good. The problem with the psalmist is the same problems we have. You don't ever know the battle that people are fighting when you are around them. You, you cannot possibly know unless you know. And it might not be as easy for them as we might think it is sometimes. But what, what really amazes me is that God has laid his hand on some people. Here they are in the house of God, even though things are not going their way. All of their prayers are not being answered. Uh, they're fighting the battle in one way or another, and probably all of us do. But the good thing is this, when you have tasted of the Lord, when you have walked with the Lord, when you begin to know the Lord as He really is, your life is never going to be the same again. Praise God for that. And even on a bad day, if you're headed for heaven, you got something to look forward to. The Bible says there's a hope that fadeth not away in the King James Version. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming again one of these days. Everything will be made right. All of the heartaches and disappointments of this life will be gone. It's not a fairy tale. When I got saved, I was reading my Bible through. I could not believe all that stuff I read in the book of Revelation. I had always thought that was poetry. And I read it, and there it was, right? I kept reading, reading it about streets of gold and jasper walls and no more pain and no more sickness. I kept reading that over and over and over. And I realized who that was talking about. It's talking about me. And if you're a child of God, it's talking about you as well. And you've got something to look forward to, a reason to look up even on days when you feel down and out. Can you give the Lord praise? And when you taste of the Lord and you see that He is good, it took me a long time to figure that out. I was in my 20s. I, I often think I would have wasted a part of my I could have done so much for in ministry if I had gotten saved sooner. But anyway, I did get saved. And I found out that even though I've had some terrible times, just like all of us have, some of, some of you right now may not know who you are, but 
You're not, you don't have it easy. Life's not easy for you. But here you are in the house of God. Many times in church, when I got saved and got hurt easily, that's because I refused to grow in the Lord. It wasn't their fault, it was my fault. You know, if you'll grow in the Lord, you'll get up. And so that's what I did. And that was good for me. Thank God I did that. I'd never be in this place this morning, right here where I am, speaking to you today if I hadn't done that. But I found out, on my bad days, it's better to walk with the Lord and to know that the Lord is walking with you than on a good day without the Lord. I've tried it both ways. I would rather have the Lord on a tough day than not to have the Lord on a good day. Because on a tough day, I might not can fix it, but I can pray to somebody who can. Praise God. I might not can fix it, but I can find the promise in the Word of God that will pick me up and get me going in the right direction. I can find something in the Word of God that God will speak to my heart. I'll find that somebody else who looks like or sounds like they were walking in just a tough as valley as I might be or you might be in that good news that God thought enough of you to put that in the Word of God so you can hear the Word of God and read the Word of God and keep going in the right direction. God is good on a Sunday and a Monday and all through the week. I got saved. Like, y'all remember when you first got saved? Woo. It's like that old time religion. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. It's good enough for me and good for all them other people that is written about in that song. And that's what happened to me. And one day, I came back down to earth. And I discovered, to my dismay, that I was not a perfect person yet. When I first got saved, I thought, what's this sin stuff people talk about all the time? What, what are they talking about? about tough times? I didn't know. I was doing good. But I found out you have to live in the real world. And so I had to grow some more. So that's what I did. I grew some more. And God's good. I found out if you taste of the Lord, you'll see that He's good. Even if you have to grow when you might not want to in ways you might not want to sometimes. But that's good. Praise God. Many times I have thought to myself, uh, this is more than I can do, which I think that a lot. I'm still convinced of that. Uh, this is more than I can do. I'm not up for this. And look at all this situation I'm having to deal with. I don't know where it came from the first time that I said it, but I said it to myself. God has called me to this. And the Lord has never forsaken me or never abandoned me. Not once has the Lord ever forsaken me. And I say to myself, why should I let the devil have it when the Lord is on my side and God is with me? It would be a good day if we could say that to ourselves sometimes. I know it's terrible. I know it's not good. I know my prayers don't look like they're getting off the floor, let alone to the ceiling. And, and I know that I've been struggling with this forever. And some people in our church have, and a lot of people outside our church have. But nonetheless, it's not time to give up. It's not time to quit. It's time to believe God for greater things. If God has blessed you this far in your life, who knows what God may have for you tomorrow. It's easy to give up, as Leslie was talking about. When you're down and out, if you know her story, it is not a, 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 a pleasant story or an easy story. But I always admired the people who could, could come through the toughest of times and still serve God anyway. Regard, get up and get going and stay going in the right direction. God will be with you and God will bless you and God will be your friend. When you don't have a friend, God will be your, your, your confidence when you don't pop it off and you don't have anybody to talk to. And there in the midnight hours of your life when you feel forgotten and abandoned and all God is good. Makes you wonder why the psalmist ought to write or was impressed to write. Holy Spirit moved upon this psalmist to write. Oh, taste of the Lord and see if he 
is not good. See, if he is a is see if he isn't worth walking with. See if he isn't worth learning from. One day Jesus and the disciples, they were there. Jesus has said something like this weird statement. Somebody, any of the PR guy or something. He tells these masses of people who are following him. If you don't eat of my flesh or drink of my blood, then you don't have any part with me. See, I would have said, Jesus, and listen, you can't do those tweets like that. People are not going to understand them. Let's, let's, let's just say it this way. How about that? You, know, you need a New Living Translation, Jesus. If you had that, you could do this better. But Jesus has not made it. The ways of God are higher than my ways and your ways. And that's what he said. The Bible said many of his disciples walked with him no more. So he turns around, and here are some, a few left, and he says to them, What about you? Will you not also go leave? And Simon Peter, or either of the disciples, all said, Where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Listen, nobody else has the words of eternal life except Jesus. It, Jesus is the one who is the only way and the only truth. Amen. He is the way, the truth, and the only life. There is an eternal life. There is no other way. It's not like you can sort of, you know, start out anywhere and, and go wherever you want to and it's, it's a great place and just whichever way you want to go. With Jesus, we know it's not like that. The good news is, though, for those who will walk with the, with the Lord, those who have, will have tried to walk with or experience the presence of God, experience the grace of God, and experience the goodness of God, and experience the love of God, it, it is a revolutionary experience. And I've seen what it does in people's lives. There are people who cannot afford it. As we mentioned tithing, we don't even hardly talk about offerings very much. God's blessing our church and blessed it. You need the tithe. I need the tithe regardless of anything else. And I'm a tithe. I, I started tithing before I heard about tithing, before I ever read about tithing, before I knew anything about tithing. I just thought that's what we should do. Brenda was already tithing. But I, I was saying, I wasn't going to church. She could give all her money to the church. I didn't care. But I didn't want to go. I'd be right there when she and Crystal got back, but I didn't want to go. And uh, But when I got saved, all that changed. Just like that, like it did for a bunch of us, or maybe all of us, I hope. The good news is this, that I have found out that God in His grace and in His goodness has been with me through all the times of my life. And uh, all of us have got some stories to tell, and all of us have got some scars to prove it. One of my favorite poems is a Christian poem. Her first name is Hannah Whitehall. I forget her last name. But the name of her poem is Hast Thou No Scars? So she wrote it like it was King James Version Bible. <clears throat> or like William Shakespeare would have written it, which is the same language. That's why the King James Version sounds like William Shakespeare. Uh, writing because that's how people all talk in 1611 and has thou no scars and the whole premise of that poem is is at the last line it says can can uh, he who has traveled far have no wounds and have no scars and if you walk with the Lord you're going to have them that's not a bad thing that's a good thing. If you can bear those, we might not like them, but that's a good thing. That's one of the ways we identify with Christ. That shows people we have tasted of the Lord and we've seen that He is good and He's worth the scars and He's worth the disappointments. He's worth the having to get up and make yourself get up and go again even when you don't want to get up and go again in the right direction. And God is so good and His grace is so real. He is worth uh, walking with, worth serving, worth living for, worth 
building his kingdom for we build his kingdom different ways through talent through through time we got volunteers our newest children's pastor Connie Spangler's doing children's church or kids kingdom today these people give their time and effort all these multimedia people uh, an endless amount of time and we thank God for those who do that but that, so does the finance committee so does every, all these people who do different things and the good thing is this that tells you that somebody has tried walking with the Lord somebody knows what it's like to walk with God and somebody knows what it's like not just to walk with the Lord to make sacrifices for God but also, as Leslie mentioned this morning, and all of us could, I can tell you that I'm blessed by the Lord on my bad days or on my worst days or when I'm depressed. I'm a pastor. I have all those days. They're not fatal. They're not final if you don't let them be. Why should I let them be final when God is with me? And the Lord has helped me before. I've been through those times, and God has so far brought me out of 100% of them. And if, he has a, if you're going through that right now and the Lord hasn't brought you out, keep walking with the Lord. I believe He'll bring you out. I believe that God is able not just to bring you out, but to bring you out with a greater shout than you had before you went in it. Greater than a greater joy than you had before you went in it. And your faith will be tough. You think you have tough faith now, but that's how it gets tough. It's when you walk through the valley. And when you come out of it, you go all the way through it. Through it is a word. In, in, in Psalm 23, though, I walk through the valley of the shadow. He didn't get stuck there. He didn't stay there. That wasn't his eternity. But he got all the way through it. And I believe that God can bring you through it and me through it. When you come out of it, your faith is at a whole new level. Praise God. That's how that works. God is good. He cares for you. Oh, taste of the Lord and see that He is good. And you have found it out the day before I ever got up. The presence of the Lord. What makes church is the presence of God. Amen. That's what makes church, church. I read it right away. I preach now. Y'all you know, see my outline. Ooh, I've got it. I can now find. I know how to be I'm good at that. And I know it. An outline with no anointing is dead. No matter how good it is. And I need see the problem with this, I don't know when to quit. See, I don't have a word of invitation at the end of what I'm doing here. Because our musicians will come. God is good. Thank you so much for being here today. Hey, if you're watching online, the Lord loves you and He cares for you. But if you're not saved, you will die lost in your sins. And everybody in this place hates that. And so do I. And that's why we spent all this money on you being able to see that. So you won't die lost and go to hell. Uh, Jesus loves you. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will shall not or will not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life. That is worth waiting to the very end for. Let's stand together. Father God, thank you for the privilege we've had to be in the Lord's house on a Sunday morning. I've had a great time today. I'm so fortunate not to get to listen to this man. All these people so who are so gifted. People who give money that come to our church and those who don't come to our church that give money. God, we need your favor. Every church needs your favor. We have to do the things that will help us to find favor in your sight. But I pray, God, that you'd help us as individuals. As households, and we might just be one household with or without a bed. But I pray, God, that you would bless every household to be able to walk with you, to find favor with you. As the water has already found out, and some others have, and I have. We believe you for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and settlements. I believe in you for greater favor, not less favor of God, but 